Well, my name is Michelle Beatty and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Nursing and Midwifery at the University of the Highlands and Islands. In the department we have about 400 to 450 undergraduate student nurses and we also have a growing postgraduate community so we've got about 140 and then we have about 18 PhD students in the department as well. We're quite a small department, so I think they get a very good quality of supervision. There's not really a hierarchy, so if we were on campus, we would be sharing coffee bakes together. The sort of main themes in the department are obviously based around the expertise in the department is physical activity, intervention design, and sort of health and social care experience or service redesign. It's all really about improving the health and well-being of people that live in the Highlands and Islands. And of course, that research goes beyond that to an international audience as well at times. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was some university funding directed to projects that were going to have an impact in terms of COVID. Um, and we put an idea together which was about looking at the experiences of staff who worked in care homes and in particular how their levels, their levels of stress and what contributed to that and how they coped. And this was really important because care home staff are an under-research group anyway, not always been very valued by society. So they, they haven't had a lot of research done in that area. And then, of course, the pandemic really impacted on them disproportionately. Looking back, you're kind of proud of how far the home's come. Going from lockdown in March 2020 right through to now, you know, the home's grown massively. Our outbreak lasted for six weeks and it took us just as long to get back on our feet um, because it, it did hit the home really hard and it kind of burst our little bubble that we were living in. At the end of it, like you just needed to take a deep breath because it was just continuous. It literally just went in a blur. We had a total of 52 cases across staff and residents, so we were very much affected by the outbreak. We were doing everything right. We had all the PPE in place, we had all the cleaning things in place, everything that you could possibly think of, and yet it just spread and there was nothing we could do. You kept thinking to yourself, what am I doing wrong? And doubting yourself, have I done that, have I done that? Because you just felt like it wasn't stopping. We lost 11 residents in total, yeah. It felt different coming back after my isolation period. As weirdly as it sounds, it didn't feel like here. I think because it was, we had loss of life and there was obviously still a significant amount of staff off, that it was just, it wasn't us, do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't our little team, yeah. It's so emotional and there's so many different emotions going on, not only the stress of it, but everything else. You look back and think, gosh, that it's actually something pretty significant that we've gone through. It's huge and it's going to stay with the home forever. Of course, dealing with that has a psychological impact for staff. So we thought it was really important to, one, give them an opportunity to tell their stories. You know, and some I think for some of them that was very cathartic. And secondly, to try and learn from that so that we could put some supportive interventions in place. So we designed a survey um, for staff and that was really using validated instruments that measure stress and coping. And unsurprisingly, that told us that staff had very high levels of stress. Interestingly, they had medium to high levels of coping. So their stress wasn't due to the fact that they couldn't cope. It was due to, the we think, the context of working in a care home during the pandemic. One of the other key things was about the restriction in visiting. And again, whilst people understood that was necessary, the upshot of that was residents were dying without their relatives with them. And morally, that did not sit well with um, care staff. So I think that, you know, all of that 
if you're forced into a situation where your behaviour or what you need to do doesn't fit with your values and beliefs, then there's a huge impact, a psychological impact and a real risk of what we would call moral injury, where people really suffer because they, the staff sort of think, despite working really hard, they're not given the care that they believe is the best care. One of the things that it did show though was how well they coped and some of the things that enabled that coping. One of the things we think was quite unique to the care home context was their sense of family and how they supported each other through the pandemic. The other thing that helped them cope was there was a, a good sense of leadership support. So they felt like the it was a real reciprocal respect between the care home staff, the managers, and even right up to sort of senior executive level. Everybody was doing their best to try and support them at the front line. The whole team pulled together. It was very much like all hands on deck, and it was amazing just to see how much the team did pull together, you know, as one of those kind of, we've got this, we can do it, we can get through it kind of thing. So it has kind of brought the home closer and I feel like it's almost brought us closer to our residents as well. And just being known that you're not alone and that we have actually gone through this as a team. We think what's important now is actually possibly co-designing an intervention with the staff. So, you know, rather than just lifting off something that already exists, either adapting that or designing something from scratch that would be suitable to this particular population. I think it's not even the intervention, but how it's implemented um, and how it might work in a care home setting, because this is staff that don't often get access to training and education, certainly don't have time or resources to do that. So I think it needs to be done in quite a, a creative way.